YouTube, it is Mr. Bean coming at you this Saturday afternoon, 3.37 p.m. It is snowing. It is huge snowflakes. Uh, it's crazy outside. I got my coffee, and I'm staying warm. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Um, so far, so good. Hope everything is going well. Today's video du jour, my camera's crooked. It's driving me nuts. There we go. Yes, I shaved the beard, baby face. Look, one day and I've already got a five o'clock shadow. Today's video du jour, Frontier Space. Frontier Space, I got my, I got a different mic. Well, I'm using my snowball, but I don't have the arm because I reset my desk. But today, Frontier Space, this is the, I gotta get it a little different here. This is the referee book. Uh, this is gonna have everything in there that you're gonna need. Uh, to be a referee, it's be by DWD uh, Studios. Uh, the author is Bill Logan. He's produced a couple different things. Uh, co cover art is Eric Quigley. Uh, and I gotta say, I'm kind of a fan. Um, I also have the player's handbook. I'll talk a little bit more about that because that's really most people are gonna be players. There's only a few of us that are GMs. Um, this has everything in it that you're gonna need to run your game and, uh, you know, be the GM. You got your alien races, you got your monsters, you got your threats, you got a couple of charts. Uh, it is super cool. Uh, it's easy to read, it's a big font. Um, book is laid out well, hardback. Uh, it's, you know, it's stitched and glued binding. I don't think it's gonna fall apart anytime soon. Um, it's very much black and white. There's no color. The art is pretty apropos for the setting. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the art. I'm going to tell you that right now. I think the art is very substandard for the quality of this book. Um, but you know what? That's the art direction that uh, Bill went with. Bill Logan, the author. Um, I, the cover art, I think, is pretty good. I do I do like the cover. I get the glare off of it right there. DWD uh, Studios. Um, I really like it. A percentage-based system. Super cool. You could play Star Wars with this. You could play Star Trek. You could. This is a generic sci-fi setting. It has a little bit of a setting in there. It has a whole bunch of alien races. Um, but you could play uh, your various you know sci-fi games that you want to play. Last Parsec, if you're not a... If you like the setting, but you're not a fan of the Savage Worlds rules, this would do it. Your own uh, Battlestar Galactica, you know, you name it. You, you can do it with this. It's generic enough. Um, I think that it wouldn't take much tweaking. The technologies in here, everything you need to, to, you know, sandbox your own setting, you could definitely do. Um, so, I, I, really, the only thing I don't like about this game is the art. It's the only thing. The only thing. I er, Actually, everything else is really cool. Character creation... It's a percentage-based system. Um, it's very well laid out. Um, uh, 234 pages uh, in the player's handbook, hardback. Um, it's It's got some setting in here. You don't have to use it. Like I said, you could use your own thing. What I do like, one of the neat little things I like is um, he gives you a conversion from metric to standard or to imperial. So And back and forth. So it's nice to have it in there. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, he gives a, a note on the golden rule. The referee, the GM, the storyteller, whatever you want to call him, the director, um, is the final arbitrator of the rules. But the golden rule is to have fun, which if you're doing it and everyone's having a good time, that's all that matters. Um, percentage system, uh, critical success system is when you roll doubles underneath your skill level. Uh, you, you get a critical success. Uh, it's pretty cool. I I really dig. Um, very simple. It's a sim simple system, guys. It's really easy. Um, but it, I think it, it's got a lot of depth. I can't wait to get this to the table and play it with a couple of friends. Uh, your abilities are strength, agility, coordination, perception, intelligence, and willpower. And then a very short list of skills, very succinct reminds me of savage worlds in that way in that way our skills are academic artist commander diplomat explorer marksman medic pilot scientist technician thief and warrior uh, and you make action checks uh, you have initiatives 
it is uh, I, I, I don't it's a really simple system it, uh, it seems to be uh, you have uh, you make multiple roles to um, for your character creation uh, so you roll 2d10 uh, and that's going to give you a percentage score that you're going to fill in your attributes now they do give you the standard array of 65 60 55 55 50 and 45 so you can if you don't want to roll you know on the chart and then reference what the score is going to be you can just take the standard array so if you wanted to get through character creation really quick everybody could start off with that and then you could adjust via your race now the races do give you some extra uh positives and minus minuses on your uh, attributes um, and you can specialize. One of the things I really like about this is if you don't take, uh, what is it? Let me double check here. It's, uh, if you don't, if you don't take the skills marksman and or warrior, if you don't take those two skills, you get bonuses, uh, to character creation. So it keeps everybody from being gun bunnies and murder hobos, which I really like. So you can play a diplomat, or you could play an explorer, you could play an artist, uh, you know, you could play a scientist or a pilot. You know, some people really like like the spaceship combat in their game and stuff. I'm not a huge fan of that, just because I've never experienced a really good system. I think Star Wars comes pretty close to it. I think um, Modiphius's Star Trek comes pretty close, but they're not. it's not my favorite because I always feel like somebody's being left out of the game, even though all of those games that I mentioned give rules and subsystems to keep everybody engaged. I just feel like if you're not the pilot or the gunner, you're kind of, meh, you're doing your thing. So I don't I don't put a lot of spaceship battles in my games. I like to, I like to have the players be a little more interactive. And again, I think, uh, oh, another one that comes to mind that does it really well is Coriolis. Coriolis does it really well. So um, I think Coriolis would probably be my favorite. If I had to do spaceship combat and stuff like that, it would be Coriolis. Uh, and then maybe Fantasy Flight's uh, Star Wars. I, I don't know. Or, or Modiphius' Star Trek. It'd, it'd be a toss-up. But, yeah, if you if you don't specialize in either of those two skills, um, Marksman or Warrior, you get extra points, which I think is pretty cool to make your character. Um, you have a couple of different species, the uh, Arakai, the humans, the Novum, the Yar, and a robot. Um, out of all of them, I think the humans and the robots are my two favorite. Uh, the robot, because you can make you can make the character you want to make. Uh, you kind of have an open slate. You build your robot up. So it's also the most demanding as far as character creation goes. Um, you start with some standard equipment, or you can choose to buy your equipment. If you take the standard equipment, you get less money, but, you know, it kind of cut and dry. And then there's a finishing chart, uh, damage bonus, languages you speak, sex, handiness, uh, name, and other stuff, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, I like that the game doesn't take itself too, too seriously. Um, there's little quips and jokes in here, uh, that I think are really neat, um, I have heard about this game forever, um, but I've never gotten to play it. And then on our Discords, which of course there's links down in the doobly-doo, so come on down and, and chat with us. We talk about all kinds of RPGs. Um, I think it was The Batman, uh, which is one of one of uh, the people on my, my Discord. He uh, he mentioned it. And I think uh, Big Al, who's, all, who's also a Patreon member, as well as a, a, a post a lot on the uh, Discord, he mentioned it as well, if I remember correctly, and I was like, I've heard of this game, but I don't own it. So I went on Drive Through RPG, and I did the the print on demand, and, and they came a couple took like a week, week and a half. So um, as you can see, I got a bookmark. Uh, I, I want to give it a run. Um, so if you're interested in playing, drop on into the discords and shoot me a message and let me know. Hey, uh, you want to you want to give it a try? I'm also going to maybe post. Um, looking for players on Demiplane. I've been looking at Demiplane a lot. Um, I've been using Foundry VTT uh, to run my weekly Pathfinder games, and that's been going great. We had a great session last night. We played for about two hours. We, we start at 8, and we wrap up sometime right around 10, 10.30, um, just because, to believe it or not, it's harder and is more taxing to run on virtual VTTs than it is to have everybody sit around the table. In fact, I think that is going to be one of my next video 
in my GMing section uh, video discussions about GMing and, and playing uh, is playing on a virtual tabletop uh, because there's a lot of options out there. Um, I'm smitten with Foundry. I do use Roll20 as a player in my friend Brian's uh, D&D game, um, but I very I, I do next to nothing inside of Roll20. I do everything through D&D Beyond. The integration with Roll20 is phenomenal. The only thing I use Roll24 is to look at whatever pictures and the map that Brian shows. But even then, I'm, I pretty much am theater of the mind. Um, and, and, and for me, to be honest, it's been working just fine. But that's everybody's different. Um, now, for my GMing taste, and because of the pandemic, I have to run remotely. I have a small child at home. I don't want to take a chance of him getting sick. And as well as most of my players have children. So we decided to move our game remotely and I found Foundry. I had already owned it and so I uh, decided to start using it and start learning it and I'm very pleasantly surprised with it. So Frontier Space, I think there's a couple of generic different systems uh, on Foundry that I could probably use with this, uh, you know, for it's, it's a basic uh, generic system, percentage based. Um, and I really like it. It's got a, a pretty extensive equipment section in it. Um, it's, it's, uh, like I said, you know, you can see there's the player's book. So there's a couple of different races on the cover. I'm trying to keep the glare off the screen. I apologize. Um, so yeah, Frontier Space, I'm glad I got it. Uh, I thank my members in the Discord who pointed it out to me and, uh, I'm very happy with it. I've been reading it over the last week, really enjoying it. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, and I'm a big fan of, if you've watched my channel, you know I'm a big fan of percentage-based systems. So this is definitely a winner. Um, let me know, have you checked it out? I just want to do a quick video to highlight it um, because I think it's a cool game and you should check it out. Pick it up on DriveThruRPG. If you do, use my affiliate link. Uh, it'll be down in the doobly-doo. And uh, that say, uh, gets me a little bit of cash and doesn't cost you anything extra. And it helps support the channel. So... Uh, also, uh, I have, of course, Discord links in the doobly-doo, and I also have Patreon, uh, $5 a month, gets you a, a designator on, uh, on Discord so that everybody knows you're a Patreon member, and you also uh, get first dibs on any games I run um, on my channel, or if I get luminaries like Steven Turner or Andy Staples or Andrew Marrington, uh, Nasser Super Base Beast from the GRC out there in Bahrain, uh, you know, we have a couple really cool people. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian I uh, is on my Discord, quite active. Um, Tohawk is running the Dark Guy. So lo lots of cool stuff going on in the channel. Uh, you know, the Discord is really the best way to get a hold of me. I'm, I do the social media on MeWe, um, so you can definitely check me out there and send me a friend request. Um, I do uh, peruse the MeWe, uh, but that is my, my social media of choice. Uh, other than that, guys, I don't really have a whole lot. I just wanted to put out a quick video to, to let everybody know what a cool little sci-fi game this is. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I also, through DriveThruRPG, you can get the GM screen. I have it put away. Um, and it's inserts, so you use it with your favorite uh, generic GM screen. So um, really nice, nice uh, GM screen. It's heavy card, um, you know, and the the drive through sends it to you in a, in a mailer pressed flat, you know, so it, it didn't get mangled. I was very impressed. Um, and very generic sci-fi pictures on it. And then of course all the charts that you as a GM would need. Uh, so very, uh, very, very impressed with frontier space. Can't wait to get it to the gaming gaming table. It's a percentage based system. Uh, you roll your opponent rolls, whoever wins you do damage or you don't, you, you don't take damage if you make your dodge or whatever. Um, Super cool system, generic races, you know, your standard space races. You know, you got your insect, you got your reptilian, you got your giant furry dog, basically. So it's, it's got a lot of cool. Um, I don't know what other resources are available for it. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go uh, check out DWD's website. And I, I'm not even sure if they have a website. It may only be on DriveThruRPG. I'm not even sure if this company is still around, to be honest. Let's see, 2017. Uh, so yeah oh creative oh well that's their creative commons license that's not their website i don't believe they have a website uh let's see, check the character sheet so sorry the video is kind of all over the place uh 
it's nice index too by the way table of contents is very extensive and the index is really good if you're looking for something you will definitely find it on the index um character well, i might as well show you the character sheet so that's a generic character sheet um which i really like it what's neat is up here these pips you see these boxes that's your initiative and so what you do is when you take your your first initiative you're at minus zero because and then your second initiative is minus 20 if you have anything left over you get to go again if you don't you know and i believe it's your uh, agility plus a 1d10 uh, you add it together uh, and that gives you your your initiative if i remember correctly i should probably look at that before i i speak uh uh, frontier settings of derp. Uh, rules, page 61. Let's go to page 61. Uh, Sonic Stunner, Wrist Rockets. Come on, we got all the cool tables. So the uh, index is not very well. The table of contents does not match up because right now I'm in page 61. Let me make sure I got that right. Equipment. Oh, Rifle 61. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. Where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? I saw rules here, and now I'm... They do have the Frontier Space setting. Uh, the Asimar Prelatesy, the Galactic Federation, the Kai Empire, the Noble Council... The Rhinagar hold in the Yar clanarchy and an independent system. So it does have its own generic setting, but you know, again, you could use this for anything else, and I don't think anybody would would have a problem with. Uh, I am looking for skills. Where are this pistols? I I am just I am flabbergasted here, guys. I don't see. Oh, here we go. I was in the wrong section. Um, action chance initiative, page 11. Man, they just jump you right into it, don't they? Page 11. Um, uh, so uh, simply look at your character sheet and find your in initiative score. It will be a single number like 1, 2, etc. You roll that many dice, but don't add them up. Is select the highest one rolled as your initiative score that combat round. Combatants then take their actions in order of initiative, highest to lowest. So there you go. So, but, and then I will bet you if we go back and we look at putting your character together, we'll see the, how you get your initiative, which I believe initiative is a, it's based off of two stats, if I remember correctly. Um, and there's a nice uh, example in here of a barroom fight where they're trying to, the two player characters track down the bad guys. And it's kind of a, a, a neat thing. So I kind of like that. They give you a nice good example of, of what's going on. Uh, uh, your base initiative score is one add plus one. If uh, your, uh, CRD. I always forget what CRD stands for. Uh, man, I am I'm I'm failing here, guys. I apologize. I'm, I'm just all over the place today. Uh, man, I am I'm sucking here today. Uh, oh, and there's destiny pools too, which is really cool. You can use that for rerolls and and stuff like that. Uh, oh my gosh, I am just dying here, guys. Uh, coordination, geez, I couldn't remember it. So it's uh, oh, and there's a um, a really nice starting gear chart that you can go pick stuff off of, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, I just totally lost a second on where the initiative is. It was page 11. There we go. Let's get back to page 11. Page 11. Ah, uh, here. Oh, no, that was.
was man, I'm 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 biting it here, guys. I'll tell you what, buy the book. <laughs> um and it will all make sense. It is super cool. I really like it a lot. Um it was the destiny point system is uh your destiny pool uh, is an option for players and referees who choose a leader for the team. Uh, a destiny token can be spent uh, determining your destiny score. At the end of character creation, this is the score. It won't ever get higher. Destiny can, however, diminish as the character improves his abilities and skills and stops relying on the fate to save them. So as you progress, as you get better, that destiny pool actually shrinks. Um, and you, But you're because you've advanced and you've leveled up, you're going to be better at things. And so you won't have to rely on the uh, destiny, uh, which I really like. Uh, the destiny token can be spent uh, uh, in any of the actions listed below. Uh, destined for success, you can upgrade or downgrade the result of an action check. Uh, destined to survive, you can spend a point of destiny at the beginning of the round when you roll initiative to guarantee that you will not die that round in combat. That's always good. And de destined to defeat the enemies. If a player is absolutely determined to hurt someone or something, he can spend a point of destiny to automatically maximize damage rolls, turning all dice to show a ten value. He has decided this before the you decided this before the rolling. So that is pretty darn cool. Um, I want to see where we get initiative. Uh, yeah. So here we go. Uh, your base initiative score is 1. You get to add plus 1 if your coordination is 65 or higher. And you get to add a plus 1 if your perception is 65 or higher. So um, you can have a, basically an initiative of 3. 1, 2, or 3. And then well, let's... I know there was something different about initiative that really struck me as really cool. Uh, uh, Find your initiative score will be a single number like one, two, or three. You roll that many dice, but don't add them up. Select the highest one rolled on your initiative score that combat round. Combatants take their actions in order of initiative. So, yeah. And then on the character sheet, you'll see, like I said, it points out the uh, minus zero, minus 20, minus, I think it's minus 40, minus six. It goes, it goes in increments of uh, 20. Yeah, two, four, six. And so, what happens is that's a you subtract that from your per because everything's a percentage. So, so you, your first action is free. You don't take any penalties. You want to take a second action. It's a minus twenty. You want to take a third action. It's minus forty, and so on and so forth. So it, you know after probably that second action, it's going to get real tough. Um, so yeah, very cool mechanics. Uh, ten damage is all d tens if I remember correctly. Um, let's look at some equipment. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Missiles. Uh, it just, yeah, I believe it goes off the, the level of success, and that's how much damage you do. 3D, yes, and the dice are all D10s for damage, if I remember correctly. So that's how many dice you'll roll, and I believe you add them up for damage. So lots of cool pictures. I do like the art for the weapons. I, I will say that part is pretty cool. Um, as you can see, there's some pictures right there. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty neat. I mean, not all the art's bad. I mean, like those two pieces aren't too bad, you know, but some of the art is just wonky and it just doesn't do the game justice in my book. Um, but you know, that's like this, this is a cool piece of art, you know, a nice little walker, um, you know, so and again, like the spy bot, I think looks stupid. You know, it just looks dorky. But then there's a soldier bot, which actually looks pretty cool. So it's kind of it's kind of hard to say, you know, um, what's what's your thing, you know? But there's a big extensive section on robots to make robots uh, and do your thing. All the weapons, like I said, uh, are pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with this, you know, and you got some kind of classes here, your pilot, your technician, your scientist. Um, and not classes per much, it's the skills. Um, and those skills determine what you can do. So you, you're, there's no class. You're not, you know, a warrior, a, 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 a priest or anything like that. You are whatever race you are, and you are a pilot, you are a mercenary, you are a warrior, you are a priest.
priest, you are a doctor, um, but there's no class, you don't, there's no levels. As you skill up, you'll get experience points and you spend that to upgrade stuff. So it's pretty darn cool. Um, I am, I am definitely a fan of the system. I like the races. I think they're definitely unique and different. They're generic enough that again, you could, you could burn this into any. If you have your your favorite uh, sci-fi setting du jour, you could probably pop this in there. And the mechanics are pretty ger generic enough that you can make it fly. Um, so um, I think I've babbled on enough about it. Uh, since I couldn't find page numbers, I should have bookmarked them. I apologize. Uh, but that is Frontier Space Drive Through RPG. Uh, hope. You like it? If you have any questions, feel free to drop notes uh, down there in the in the comment section, and I try to answer all the comments. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Again, check me out on Discord. Uh, as uh, a certain other famous YouTube YouTuber says, "Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it." Uh, I think that's a very cool phrase, and so I have stolen it. I give full credit to Dave du Dave Two D. Uh, he's a popular YouTuber that does tech videos, and I watch his videos quite a lot. So. Uh, I really respect him and I enjoy his videos. Uh, go check him out if you haven't. And other than that, peace, love, and hair grease. And remember, be nice.